I can tell you, and you know, we get we're getting deep here, Dr. Riley. Let's do it. But I can tell you, Earth's like, core deep. Come on. Hello and welcome to episode nine of the Wellness Dojo podcast, where we bring real solutions to real health and wellness problems. Today, we're talking about quality of life. What makes a good quality of life? What countries and cultures have demonstrated this the best? And how can you incorporate some of those aspects into your life, no matter where you are in the world? I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's go. Two, one, and green light go. <laughs> We're live. We're live. We're hitting it. Episode nine, Wellness Dojo podcast. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us once again. Dr. Riley here with my fabulous co-host, Kyle Craig. Yes. The strength Sifu and the naturopathic ninja. Bringing it, bringing it. All right. So um, how are you doing today? Let's start there. I'm doing pretty good today. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, I, I, I'm caffeinated. I had the jitters from the caffeine yeah, this morning, I saw a but, little but, bit of that. but those jitters died off now. I'm I'm smooth. I'm calm now. You see oh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, needed some food in my belly. Don't go caffeine without food. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't suggest it. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool, cool. So what we're talking about today, we're, we're looking for lessons and patterns in some of the world's healthiest and happiest countries slash cultures and we're going to determine you know what we can do uh in our own country what are what are some transferable lessons that we can learn because there's always going to be uh unmodifiable factors that these places have that maybe you at home don't and and vice versa right so um we're going to look at uh yeah what what they really have in common and and how that can be applied to regular everyday working people lives yeah it's fascinating we see these lists online all the time of like these are the top countries to live in these are the top things and you know it's really i find it fascinating anyways on okay well but but why like what's making those places so desirable to live in um and you know a lot of times there's a lot of external factors and we can talk about some of those um but we want to also look at you know the things that are are more in our control Mm -hmm. and try and give You know, no matter where you are, hopefully, you know, give some pointers on, you know, how can you implement some of these things to maybe improve your quality of life, no matter where you are in the world. Exactly. So let's get right into it. So something that you can modify is diet. And and that tends to be one that comes up on the lists all the time. They say these cultures eat like this and they eat like that. And there are some some similarities between them. So uh, let's start outlining that right now. The first one that I want to talk about is the source of carbohydrates hmm. um, that these cultures tend to eat. And if you're wondering, like, OK, which countries and cultures um, the blue zones, which was all the rage, I don't know, five years ago. Uh, we're still we're still talking about those zones, though, because it's important. So this is um, like Greece, Italy, Japan. Uh, a certain section of California for some reason. Uh, I believe Costa Rica's in there. So there's maybe some some climate similarities as, as well that can, can account for some of this. We're up in, in Canada here where we don't get a lot of sunlight, and so we're kind of up against the elements. But hey. um, is, insofar as, as diet goes, uh, what they have in common with their carbohydrate intake, first first and foremost, it's more like like less refined sugars and more on the side of whole grains and beans and uh, like I'm one of those people that glosses over when I hear whole grains I don't you know I have to kind of look it up and remind myself what that means it really just means that um, the outer layers of the grains are maintained and so when there's refined grains they're just kind of keeping the let's call it the white layer which just breaks down as pure sugar in your body and pure sugar in your body, while enjoyable, maybe on your tongue, it it, it causes you know in, inflammation. You can get addicted to it. Um, it's quick burning energy that uh, that then just falls off right away and makes you end end up feeling even worse. So, the whole grains have the outer layers, which have fiber, which helps digestion, helps move things through, uh, helps your cholesterol levels, which also will increase your chances to live longer if you you keep your cholesterol in check. And um, the outer layers of the whole grain also have that nutritional, uh, nice mineral. Uh, it's like it's it, it is vitamin and mineral, but for me, it's more the mineral content that's in those outer layers. So that's what whole grains is. And an example that I want to share today: if you haven't tried buckwheat, go try buckwheat. So this is something that I just got into. You can go and buy. I think they call them buckwheat groats. It's the only time I've heard the word groat. But uh, like what I did is I did, a, a, it's called a dry roast. So, so if you have a cast iron pan or whatever, 
you put it on like medium heat and you kind of roast it for a few minutes first and then you put it in for the boil and you just kind of cook it like rice and it's a complete protein as, as far as I'm aware it's got fiber it's got all those minerals and it's it's fairly cheap so that would be an example of one of the carbohydrate switches you can do from something like white rice yeah and and just to dive in on the the whole grain thing like people might be wondering like okay so like you know, a whole grain, that's great. First of all, there's a difference between multigrain and whole grain. That's something that I always like to point out too, because people see multigrain and they think, oh, that, that that's healthy. Multigrain is not the same as whole grain. Multigrain means that there's multiple different things that have been put into it. Not necessarily that you're getting the whole grain product. So why do, like, if, if whole grain is so healthy, why do people and companies remove like parts of the grain well the reason they do that is for shelf life right mm. you're removing parts of that grain let's you know you're you're removing the parts that are going to expire first basically so that you improve shelf life on that product so that they can sit in the stores for longer and so that you have a better chance of buying it those sneaky corporations <laughs> so you're you're losing and in those the the parts that they're taking out unfortunately are the parts that contain they're the most nutrient dense parts of that grain yeah right so those are the parts that you're going to get the most benefit from and that's why it's so important to um to have whole grain and, and we'll go into kind of you know why those nutrients are, are important for different aspects of life and and quality of life but um I just wanted to kind of make that side note. So Yeah, good point. Good point. And have you heard that Europe has different types of grains so people who are gluten intolerant here can go there and eat gluten? I have heard that. I've yeah. heard that too. I took a quick look into it in, in preparation for this and it does look like there's a different, let's say wheat, there's a different variety of wheat. It's a soft wheat, which uh, it still can, contains gluten, but it's, it's, a, it's not as much, I guess. So mm. there's some truth to that. Just continuing on this uh, carb train here. So not only is, is it the whole grains, but there's there's other sources of carbs that are really healthy. Beans being one of them. So why are beans healthy? Well, they're low fat. They have fiber. Once again, we're starting to see these themes, right? They have protein and they have a great mineral uh, profile as well. So beans and... Uh, Oh, root vegetables. One of my personal mm. favorites. One of the cheapest things you can get at the grocery store. Uh, rutabaga comes to mind. It's one of, I mean, it's one of the healthiest foods at the grocery store and it's one of the cheapest. It's just not that delicious. You got to like, got to <laughs> spice it up a little bit. I, I like to do half and half of the sweet potato and mash it up and yeah. Well, and root vegetables too is one of the easiest things you can grow like in most places too. Yeah. Like you can grow carrots anywhere. You can grow like potatoes anywhere, like all, all of these different things. Like it's very easy to grow things in your garden no matter where you are like even here in canada where we have cold winters like we still have a vegetable garden we can still grow vegetables and stuff so yeah that's important to note i just realized we're, we're driving roy crazy talking about carbs right now it's like <laughs> no carbs one of our one of our favorite listeners you know who you are on the on the keto diet so <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So, so that's one of the things. So, um, unless you have any other comments on nope. carbs, nope. that's we can good. kind of move on from that's there. That's good. You nailed it, man. Okay. So, um, yeah. So something else is just the amount of dairy that we consume in North mm. America. Yeah. Uh, in some of these other places, some of these other cultures, they're consuming like sheep's milk and goat's milk. And I, I tried to look into this as well. It's, uh, it is, it's, it's a different, uh, quantity of the, subunit like the protein subunits that tend to cause allergies in people and tend to cause intolerances and things like that so mm -hmm. there is a difference um and then olive oil which i always find so fascinating because we just like we use a lot of olive oil of course for cooking in 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 our cultures but you know raw olive oil it can lower your cholesterol and i'm not i won't get into the mechanisms but if if you consume a certain amount let's say two tablespoons a day it can lower your cholesterol levels naturally and it can also help with blood pressure which people think of well it's a fat i don't i don't want to eat too much fat it's it's no it's it's different when it's coming from a plant yeah and oils are an interesting thing because one they're very like culturally prominent so like different cultures have like uh, I find like anytime I'm learning about cultures and diet, like oils always come up. Like mm -hmm. there's always like specific oils for specific cultures. And that's a really fascinating thing. But also oils tend to get very trendy as well. Oh like yeah. Coconut oil. Oh yeah. Like all these different things that are so trendy and it does become like very overwhelming for people who are like, okay, am I eating the right oil? Like, is this oil the best thing for me? 
Um, and, and so can you speak to that a little bit? I can. I think that coconut oil has fallen out of favor a little bit because it was touted as the be all end all oil when mm. it, when it was first hit in the mainstream there. So the thing with coconut oil is it has a pretty high, um, saturated fat content. Mm. Now, saturated fats in and of themselves aren't bad. Our body actually needs a certain amount of saturated fat daily, let's say, daily to to um, to, to survive and, and, and form uh, certain cell walls in our body. It's it's important, like our body utilizes it. So so it's in and of itself, it's not evil, but in, in large quantities, that's when it can start to increase your chance for cardiovascular disease and things like that. Um, but there's also some anti-inflammatory constituents in coconut oil too so you know i love coconut oil i consume it i love you know sauteing my veggies with it and things like yeah. that so yeah it's it's it gets so confusing for people because then they think you know when we think saturated fats we think french fries we think this mm. we think that yeah and then people hear like oh saturated fats in coconut oil it's bad no <laughs> it's like the like you said it's the amount it's the quantity the quality those types of things need to be taken into consideration right yeah yeah Okay, let's we'll keep rolling on the uh, on the diet train, then we'll kind of move on because there's a couple more things I want to talk about. Um, so these cultures also tend to uh, consume less red meat hmm. in in place of more fish, uh, more chicken, things like that. So uh, you know that's something to consider in your own diet. Red meat histologically, like as far as I understand, when they're looking at intestinal cells and things like that, and someone's consuming red meat, there is there is inflammation that happens in, in some people. I don't think it's it's everyone. It's not to to the same degree, that's for sure. But there is there is some truth to that. Um, and I, I, I also think that you're probably going to get a higher cholesterol content too in your diet. So that that could be one of the reasons. So when people are living longer, there's I mean, it's just a confluence of of factors going on, but mm. you're living longer because you're not you're you're not inheriting uh, some sort of a uh, a condition, whether it's you know something that you had control over or not. Let's say you had control over it. Um, there's going to be less incidence of of heart disease and, and things like that, and that's why people are living longer in these places. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you think about quality of life, that should definitely be on top of your list is like living longer and living better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like, OK, so when we're, we're talking about diet here and people are thinking like, OK, I thought we were going to talk about the best places to live, like quality of life, those types of things. How does diet play into that? Like, how does diet play into your overall quality of life? Okay, we know we need to eat good foods. We know we need to be healthier. But how does it actually play into the quality of your life? by diminishing your chance of, of, um, of getting some sort of, uh, a deleterious condition as, as life progresses, I would say that's, that's one of them. Having more energy obviously is, is going to increase your quality of life living longer. I think we all want to live longer to a certain extent yeah. <laughs> until it, the wheels really start falling off. But like, that seems to be something that's quite universal. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean like, let's just also, let's, let's call it like it is, at least I will like obesity. Right? Yeah. Like obesity is something that is a major problem. And when you look at, you know, quality of life, people who are struggling with obesity are struggling with quality of life. It, it just it is what it is. Like it's not, you know, it's not us shaming anybody who is struggling with obesity. Like it, it just it is what it is. If you're struggling with obesity, those and we've talked about this in our in previous episodes, like there's other things going on. It's not the fact that you are obese. It's not the fact that you are overweight. It's the things that are causing that, the things that are leading to the actions that are causing you to be there. So, that's right. you know, there's there's actions, there's reasons in your life that you're not eating as much whole foods, that you're going for, you know, the, the fast food, um, that you're going, you know, eating chips, eating snacks, those types of things. And those are all affecting what you were just talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're well aware that there's conditions that leads people to, um, have altered metabolism and, and can lead to obesity. All we're saying is just then be the best version of yourself yeah. that you, that you can be based, yeah. based on your individual factors. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other last, maybe just like a couple more things. These cultures tend to be big on tea, less coffee, and they really moderate their alcohol. Yeah. 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 It's, it's you know, that that's a really interesting thing with alcohol, too. And you just kind of spark something in my mind is, you know, when you think about quality of life and you think about like happiness and enjoyment, 
if I think about alcohol and happiness, I don't think about overconsumption. Like the, it just doesn't like it doesn't fit in my mind as like a picture. Anytime I've seen something, whether it's a video on YouTube or anything where people are happy and enjoying, you know, like having alcohol, like in a cultural, like, you know, maybe in like another country, mm -hmm. like they're doing it in like they're enjoy it's the about the moment. It's not, yeah. a, it's not about that. And so like, you know, I know red wine is something that um, has come up a lot in like quality of life or yep. sometimes people are like a glass of wine a day is best and mm -hmm. you know other people will argue that but i think it's more about what are you doing with that glass of wine like is it you know is it a social engagement where it's bringing more community to you and you're, yeah. you're doing that you know are you feeling like crap the next day because you drank too much of it and is that happening every weekend because that starts to diminish your quality of life yeah so that's an important thing too is like um any of these things that we're talking about it all circles around kind of, um, you know, how you're enjoying those things. Yes. Even whole foods. Yeah. Right. You can't be miserable because you're eating whole foods. You have to find a balance that like creates a level of happiness around that too. Yeah. Alcohol. It's, 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 it's a tricky one. It's, you know, it's sometimes it's called like the social glue hmm. of the party. Wow. And yeah. uh, I've experienced that sometimes where I'm at a networking event or something and everyone seems pretty tense we're we're wearing name tags. We don't know each other, and then an hour and a half later, almost everyone's had a drink. Most some people have had three or four, and you can just he everyone's talking and they're getting along and they're laughing, and it it does it it changes things to a, for the better to a point, yeah. and then things fall off a cliff. I, I picture a wedding, right? You get to the ceremony. Everybody's very stiff. Everybody's very like you know, hush, hush, and not really like engaging with each other. And then you get to the dinner and people have started drinking, people are talking, people are laughing, having a hard time. They're like, shh, we're doing a speech now. <laughs> and then you get to the, the dance portion and that's where you start to see people are unraveling and people are starting to look not so smart and, you know, making themselves look a little bit silly. I think that's <laughs> that's the kind of the perfect timeline for alcohol is like, okay, that maybe that um, just before dinner or just at the start of dinner, that might be like your, your sweet spot, that perfect spot to be where you can actually enjoy it and actually reach the benefits of you know what alcohol maybe could be used for for lack of a better term i had a i had a friend a few years ago and we were just we were just strictly friends and through like the meditative uh community and uh she we had a few meals together and she would order a drink and she would always just say i guess she spent some time in france and she mm -hmm. said um one to be jolly and that's what <laughs> kind of was her thing and so she'd always have just one drink just to kind of li yeah. liven things up a little bit and yeah. i'm I'm totally fine with that. I'm not somebody that rec recommends alcohol to anyone. I, I just don't, especially my patients, but or even myself. Um, but you know, it does happen, and um, yeah, like it, there's. A, I do think there's a place for it, and really, humanity has spoken. Or we tried prohibition. Look how that worked. So, uh, but but on the other side of it, um, you know, it, it's it really it alters the metabolism pretty much every cell in the body uh, mm. we all know that if you overdo it what can happen it, it, it causes um, your body to not be able to um, absorb uh, certain vitamins particularly B vitamins very well it literally destroys the brain if 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 you drink too much of it it can just destroy the stomach and it affects every major organ yeah. kind of like smoking so mm. So moderate yourself, and if you can't moderate yourself, I would suggest trying to stay away from it, don't keep it in the house kind of thing. Um, if you can moderate it, you're kind of one of the lucky people. Yeah. You know, I have a difficult time moderating it. I don't keep it in the house. I, I've seen this kind of going down my family lineage. It just, mm. it just kind of is what it is, Yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, that's a topic we could talk probably for hours and hours on end about right maybe uh, we've kind of joked about that being a topic uh upcoming so let, oh, us, yeah. let us know if alcohol is something you'd like to hear more about and kind of the you know how to maybe how to incorporate that into your life and stuff but it is something that we could talk more about it does affect quality of life but there's a lot more that affects quality of life too yes yes okay so we're going to move on a little bit here so one of the things that we also see in these countries and cultures that tend to be happier live longer and be healthier is they don't, they don't keep themselves isolated in their homes. They're they're out meeting with people face to face. Uh, there's from what I can glean, there's a less incidence of you know 
being on social media, comparing yourself almost and, and kind of living in that virtual world, these cultures tend to really, they're, they're it, more have the open door policy. Family can just kind of drop in and visit. You know, I, I see that kind of in your household <laughs> more, more than mine. But um, yeah, so, that, so that's, that's, that's they're, 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 not, they're not lonely and they're not isolated. Yeah. What is What do you think it is about that of like, just like not being isolated? And we've talked a lot about community as well on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But what do you think it is about that, that that actually improves quality of life? I think that when we're lonely and isolated, we're, we just we don't treat ourselves nearly as well when 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 there's not like and I don't know how this is going to sound, but like when there's not eyes on us, you know, uh, when we're not accountable, when when it's just up to us, it, it, I don't know, humans, we have this, this strange um, predilection towards, s- like, I don't know if it's self-destruction, that's probably a little bit far, but it's, it's something like that. And uh, I see that, like, in myself, too, if, if after, you know, a really big exam period or something that I'm like, I'm just taking a few days, like, am I treating myself great? No, it's like the lights are kind of off. I'm inactive. I'm just binging on uh, more unhealthy foods. And it's mm-hmm. like, so you, you extract that. So I, I'll do that for three days and then pick myself up, but extract that to a few months or a few years. Yeah. And what I think is going on is just that portion of our brain that um, that that likes path of least resistance it starts to get stronger and path of least resistance is less movement path of least resistance is ordering um quick and quickly satisfying but not healthy foods and and consuming uh quick media and 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 things like that so it's like that portion of our brain just yeah gets louder yeah i think that also a big part of this is you know people feeling wanted people feeling desired people feeling welcomed in other people's lives like when you are out engaging with other people you feel like you're a part of something and that's a really powerful thing for a lot of people is like mm-hmm. actually feeling like you are a part of something feeling like people actually want to have you in their lives whereas whether it's self-inflicted or not right when you are isolating yourself um it's very easy to feel like nobody nobody cares and I think there's a lot of people that struggle with that, right? Of like, people don't want to see me. And that's probably not the case, right? It's probably just like people are busy in their lives and stuff like that. Um, but it is something that, especially given the current state of the world and stuff like that throughout the last 18 months, like, I've I've heard a lot about this from a lot of different people. Of Like, people are like, yeah, just like, you know, I don't know if anybody even wants to see me right now. It's like, well, they probably do, right? You just, you know that becomes a very difficult thing too so i think in those cultures in those countries in those lifestyles where you are able to get together with people more and you you know meet with friends and you do have that open door policy um it it, i think it does help with that too of just like you know that feeling of not just loneliness but the feeling of like being a part of something people want to see me yeah Yeah, and no that was that was interesting kind of being being motivated by having recognition through other people yeah. i think that's you know that is just part of who we are and and it's okay if that's where some of your motivation is coming from i guess that would be more of an external source but mm-hmm. and you, you, you do want at least some sort of a combination but you do need the external yeah right and yeah i think there's there's something to that good point or at least like that's what i think a lot of people feel like that external not necessarily saying like that you know that's what people should look for or anything like that like ultimately you need to do what's right for you and you know internally but i think a lot of people feel that way of like if i'm not hanging out with people it's because they don't want to hang out with me or or they just like feel like they're being excluded from something like they're it's almost like that fomo right that fear of missing out it's like if i'm not hanging out with people if i'm not getting together with those friends what am I missing out on? Why do they not want me to be a part of that? Or like, why am I not a part of that? Like, is there something wrong with me? And so people, I think oftentimes when we're feeling isolated and, you know, have less of that engagement with people, then mm-hmm. y- y- it's just easier to have those games going on inside your head, right? Mm-hmm. And this might be a leap, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, maybe, just maybe, if you know that you're going to be meeting up with friends and family once a week, multiple times during the week, you might be more motivated to be doing more in your life so you have things to talk about. 
Yeah. And 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 I say that because uh, I I've I talked to someone recently, uh, someone I'm very close with, and we were we were gonna go to a social engagement, and the person was kind of like pulling the parachute at the last moment, saying. I've, you know what, I just don't have anything interesting to talk about in my life. I haven't been doing much for the last six months and I don't want to go anymore, like at the last moment. And yeah. so maybe the opposite can be true too. I don't think that's a leap at all because I've heard the exact same thing from people close to me. You know, uh, I didn't go to my high school 10 year reunion, but I spoke to people and asked people like, are you going and stuff like that? And that was one of the biggest things that I heard was people saying like, I don't want to go, you know, I haven't really... I haven't done enough. I don't. I don't hmm. want people asking me like, "What are you up to?" Because you know I'm embarrassed about it or something like that. And it's like, well, you know, we, we're all on our own journeys. There's no reason to be embarrassed about it. But yeah. But yeah, that that could be a part of it. But anyways, um, that social engagement being a big part of quality of life, right? Yeah. And and knowing what you want out of social engagement. Some people might be happier, like limiting that and being you know more on their own. Like some people might be happier removing themselves from that, you know, more of that engagement temporarily. You have to do what's right for you. Um, so again, we come back to reflection, but that social engagement does seem to prove to be one of the indicators for a higher quality of life. Yeah. I saw a stat uh, recently. I didn't look into it, so I'm not going to fully stand by it, but it said loneliness or isolation or something like that uh, on average takes uh, eight years off your life. Yeah. 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 I've seen the same stat. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All yeah. Right. It's, it's, it, it's crazy. Right. And like I said, like you need to find the, the healthy balance that works for you. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to parties. Right. That might be right. like, like this. Ni yeah. Neither right? of us are party people yeah, anymore. Like, <laughs> and like, I can tell you, and you know, we get, we're getting deep here, Dr. Riley. Let's do it. But I can tell you Earth's like core deep. Come on. My quality of life has improved since doing this podcast. Like, mm -hmm genuinely i can say that um i look forward to every week when we get to sit down because it's 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 great to sit and engage with people who are like-minded it's great to have you know mindful conversations like knowledgeable conversations impactful conversations mm -hmm. and it's great to work with somebody like as a team for a purpose yeah right yeah i love it too because when i am playing the role of doctor uh there are certain I guess norms and, and all that that I, I mean, I just have to adhere to mm -hmm. or because if I don't, it hurts the, the therapeutic relationship. And, you know, we've borrowed from the world of psychology and counseling. We, we, we know this. This isn't a naturopathic thing. It just, um, but this gives me an opportunity to kind of like lift the veil a little bit, express myself, relax. Yeah. And it's, it's nice for me too. It's nice to be yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And there's nowhere to hide, which is kind of scary, but it's awesome. It's awesome at the same same yeah. time. But no, it's that 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 engagement level. Like it does it. I I can't explain it. I'm sure science can explain it a little bit, but um, I can't personally explain it. But it does. Like you feel better afterwards. You feel better after having genuine connection. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I'm just like, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I used to have to explain everything, like I, I to explain it to myself even. Yeah. And I've, I've just learned to let things be and be like, it just, it's just is what it is. Being it just a human helps. being. It just helps. I'm going to do more of it. Yeah. 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 Um, the other thing that, that came up that I was looking at is life tends to be simpler mm. in these places. Yeah. You know, and, and like, I really think there's something to it. And <laughs> it's funny. I'm. I feel like I'm always the the person with my patients trying to tell them to like you know t tone things down a little bit, especially these days. Or not tone things down. Streamline. Streamline. Simplify. Prioritize. There's too much noise in your life. There's there's too. You got to trim trim that proverbial fat. I think prioritize is the best word. Like prioritize what matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and do it well. I used to have a a prof when I was. Uh, was I at Mount Royal? This was a long time ago. And this is in Calgary. And um, this this prof, he really touted, like, have one or two things in your life and just go for it. Don't yeah. have don't have 10. And, and, like, he was really... And people were like, well, what about this? I like variety. He's like, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't lead to happiness. It doesn't lead to satisfaction. Like, prioritize, streamline, whatever you do, try to do it well. If you're in seven things, it's just going to lead to stress. Like, everyone's different. Some people need that variety but 
you know, I, I would challenge that. Is it making you happy? Is it is it just adding more to your plate? Is it stressing you out to get everything done throughout the week? Right. This is from someone that used to be. This is me now. That used to be in a band, uh, was kickboxing full time, uh, had a job, and was going to school full time. That was me during university. Mm. Was I happy? I don't think so. Yeah. I was pulling it off. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if this section of this episode is resonating with you, I highly recommend you go and listen to our episode on core values because I think that that ties in so well is, you know, when you're thinking about, okay, well, what do I prioritize in my life? Well, go listen to that episode on core values because those core values are probably those main streams that you need to spend most of your time and energy on Mm -hmm. to find happiness. Yep. And I, I shouldn't say find happiness. I hate saying find happiness to create happiness because happiness is something that we create on a daily basis. It's not something that you just yeah. find and you get there and um, I've made it. I'm happy now. No, it's something you create on a constant basis and you have to work to create. Yeah. And if, if you haven't. Yeah, exactly. If you, and if you haven't heard me say this before, I'll, I'll just say it again. You know, that that pursuit of happiness, like it can be something that is fleeting you attain it and then your body brain just wants to go it just goes back to homeostasis again which is what it's designed to do and then you're like oh where was that happiness i just found yesterday well it's 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 a deeper journey thing than yeah. you know the the destination so just yeah just yeah. be cautious about constantly trying to chase something that is sold to you mm-hmm. through like you know movies and even music my god music pop yeah. music's just pissing me off these days <laughs> i know i was like you're gonna get me fired up here on this <laughs> conversation of happiness <laughs> So, so what else? What else are we looking at with quality of life? In terms, of, we've talked about diet. Mm-hmm. We've talked about kind of community yep. engagement, genuine connection. Yep. And we kind of started talking in on like core values, focusing on like keeping things simple. Yeah. What else? I think being outside. Mm. Being outside. Being it, and it doesn't have to be completely immersing yourself in nature and meditating by a river. <laughs> <laughs> but, cue, la- cue last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just like. Some, yeah, some sunshine, I think is important too. Cause when I was, when I'm looking at, okay, so which countries are, and of course there's not a direct correlation between sunshine and non-sunshine countries, but you know, that, that is, if, if you are, look at, you know, the extreme ends, if you are getting zero sunshine, the, the effect that that has on your mental health and sleep wake cycles and physical health. And I mean, the sunshine, it, it, it can, ju- it literally jump starts the, the process of making certain neurochemicals. Um, it, once that hits your skin and, you know, gets thin through your eyes, like things just start revving up. So it creates so, a biological response in your body. It does. It does, and that's something I, I yeah I, I learned fairly recently. Like I didn't I didn't even really know that. So yeah, and I know uh, from my personal experience when you know being around water, being a, like in the forest, being in the mountains, like those types of things, things that we are so um, grateful to have here. Like we're so lucky and fortunate to have so close by, and the, probably one of the reasons why Canada is often ranked so high on that list of best places to live. And in terms of quality of life is because we have so much beautiful nature around us. And don't get me wrong, everywhere does, right? And it, you know, for me, when I'm in nature, what it does is it reminds me that, you know, the, there's something bigger going on here. Yeah. Like, it's like when you look up to the stars and you're like, holy crap. Like, look they're at out there burning. Look at me and my tiny problems here and like look at that vast universe that's out there like again not to get too like cheesy and stuff and but really it does it like it kind of brings me back to center a little bit of mm-hmm. like okay the the problems that I'm experiencing today maybe aren't so big in comparison to all mm-hmm. of this that's around me right but also there are you know biological responses to that to being by water to being in nature to you know seeing a deer walk past you and like those types of things it does it creates this connection not just to we talk about connection to other people there is something to you know finding a connection to the earth as well and to like that that planet that we live on we literally called it call it grounding yourself the original grounding is uh you know letting letting your skin your feet, yeah, the soles of your, your feet, feet and dirt. touch the earth. Yeah, yep, can be powerful. Just that alone. Yeah, absolutely. And and I also think too, you know, we're, we are kind of on the topic of like different cultures, different countries. But let's be real. Like, there's you know, in Canada, there's people who have a really bad quality of life, and there's people who have really great quality of lives. 
the difference being who's utilizing what's available the best, right? So for example, we talk about nature. Well, yeah, there's, you know, nature all around us, but who's utilizing it? The, Mm -hmm. The people who are, you know, creating time to go out and walk, you know, like we talked about Fish Creek Park in our last episode that we have here, the people who are getting out and going for hikes in the mountains, like those are often, not always, but often people that you look at and go, man, that person seems happy. Yeah. Like they just seem like they they're enjoying life, life together. Yeah. yeah. Like they just seem like they're enjoying life. Well, that's a big part of it. Like, what are you utilizing? Are mm-hmm. you utilizing the communities around you? Are you reaching out to them? Are you, you know, are you engaging with people that, you know, finding that genuine engagement? Are you taking the opportunities that you need to take to take control of those things and to create that quality of life, to create that happiness? Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. So like if we're, if we're kind of, um, we're kind of, if we're averaging, let's say, um, socioeconomic factors and all those things that some people do have, uh, they, they were given the, sh- the short straw, so to speak. But there's also things that are accessible to everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, you don't even need a, a vehicle. We're talking like you, a bicycle. There's, I mean, even, even just walking or like it's about, it is about making that choice. Mm hmm. And taking some of those actions. So, yeah, I would say that uh, spending time in nature, trying to get some sunshine, um, just walking, even just walking with people in your household or with neighbors or with friends, meeting up and just walking and talking. If that's all you can do, yeah, that's that's better than you know a, a, a lifetime of near isolation because yeah. it's so easy to isolate yourself these days. Trust me, I know. I can do it for a week, like, no problem. And it oh, yeah. scares me the, how easy it is. Oh, yeah. Entertainment is so good. It's so good. The, like, video games and movies and shows and, and the way that they set up shows at the end so that you, that you have to start the next episode and, like... Oh, yeah, cliffhangers. It, it yeah. is all engineered to keep you immobile. It's yeah. c- kind of sick when you think about it. Is. It. it is. Yep. You know? Absolutely. It's, like these things and again kind of going a little bit off topic here i don't want to go too far into this but like these platforms and these um you know these communities of like television and stuff like that like they genuinely research uh, at least i've heard they genuinely will research on like how to get people hooked Mm -hmm. how do i get people addicted to this show how do i get people addicted to this platform like that's kind of a scary thing and we need to like have some awareness here and go okay what do i need to be happy what do i need to create better quality of life and if that's not if that's not a part of it then you need to again look at prioritizing your actions prioritizing where you're spending your time and start to do what you need to do yeah yeah we're up against a lot i i I can't even remember what uh, there was some stat about like by the time you're 18, how many tens or hundreds of thousands of fast food ads you're oh, yeah. going to see throughout your lifetime? Or? It, it's insane. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of ashamed to, to say this, but like the other day we were sitting at the table uh, with my kids and I was quizzing them on slogans. Like we're my, uh, oh yeah, my daughter, I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but she's, she has this dream. I love it. It's, it's amazing. She has this dream. She's going to I'll just say she's going to own her own business one day. Mm-hmm. Like she has this this idea. I won't give away what it is, but no, million so, dollar idea yeah. potentially. So, so we were we were talking about slogans for it. And so I started quizzing them on different slogans seeing what they knew and like they knew some slogans that I couldn't think of. <laughs> and it's just based off of like the radio and stuff like that, but it it is it it was pretty eye-opening. It was pretty um actually frightening. To, wellness to, Dojo podcast, Wellness Dojo podcast. Yeah. <laughs> wellness Dojo podcast. Yeah, it works. It yeah. does. It does. Yep. You know, we're 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 creatures of of habit and pattern. And the more the more time like that's the reason why these companies have huge marketing budgets. You know, sometimes they their marketing budget is more than their research and development. Anyways, you're right. Let's not yep. get too far yeah, into yeah. that. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, we're a little feisty today. Yeah, I'm we're finding. feisty. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh okay, antithetical to being feisty, um, these cultures also tend to they seem like they take more time to relieve their stress yeah they they do like we're kind of learning about self-care in north america you know there's books being written and all that and talk shows talking about it but like these cultures live it yeah you know they really they really live it so yeah and it's like less material things i think play into that as well right 
Like when you look at people who are genuinely happy, they care less about the material things, I find. Um, and, and I think that goes into because they're, you know, they're realizing that some of these other things that we've talked about with nutrition, with community, with, you know, being outside, like they they recognize the value in those things more than the value in the things like my tablet, my cell phone, my car, my alcohol, like those, those things, like they're recognizing the value in, in things that really matter and things that help them de-stress, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any favorite uh, ways to de-stress? I do. Um, martial arts is number one on my list for de-stressing. So I would say sports um, and exercise in, in that sense. But not like I don't find that like, and this is going to sound weird as a personal trainer. I don't find that lifting weights helps me de-stress. Sometimes I actually find I feel more stressed afterwards. But me, I think that's happened to me too. I haven't yeah. really told many people that, but yeah. I'll have something kind of going on in my head, some little thing with, you know, like back in the day when I used to live with roommates or whatever. And then I'd go and work out and I'd like be just like, ah, after because the adrenaline's pumping. The adrenaline and you've now activated your nervous system more. So if you were already like in a heightened nervous system and now it's, you know, you're, you've kind of added to that in a sense. I mean, it, it does help like clear my mind and stuff like that, but martial arts will do it so much better. Um, and that's just because that's something that I'm, you know, so passionate about too. Um, so that, and then, you know, meditation, yes, but, but more so, um, you know, music is a big one for me. Oh, nice. I, yeah. I like to, I like to go and, and all, actually one thing that I've recently gotten into, and this is going to sound like a massive plug, but like I listen to our podcasts after we post them. Oh, that's shameless. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> yeah, kidding. no, but I do. I listen to them and it, it is, it's, it's calming. I, I listen to other podcasts as well, but, but, um, it just things that take my mind off of other distractions and, and then genuine conversations with my wife is something that really, mm. um, you know, genuine conversations with my wife and spending time with my kids, but, but those genuine conversations, um, that aren't necessarily about like, oh, this today, this happened or this happened. It's just like genuine, like other things right yeah how about you <laughs> uh yeah anything to do with my uh my cuddly cat boy <laughs> um he's just the best i love him so much uh yeah uh, i have been starting to do some of what we're kind of preaching today myself and my partner have started like just kind of leaving the front door without really a plan we end up at you know we'll get grab a, a hot drink and then we'll just kind of keep walking yeah uh, yesterday we went, sorry, everyone, I'm just going to, we went to the end of 194th, okay. which is around where we live, and there's Fish Creek there, and yeah. we just kind of grabbed a hot drink and w went walking around there. So It's a good uh, spot. Yeah, so I'm doing a little bit about, uh, you know, I am doing some of what we're, we're preaching. Um, my, my meditations are probably a little bit too short, my daily meditations, to really call it stress relief, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I, I, I do use food, honestly, but it, I use healthy food. I'll, I'll do like a big meal prep, and then my reward is is that nice healthy meal but it, it, that really highlights because i'm the same like when i'm eating healthy i am less stressed whereas like and it probably has something to do with being in the industry and like we're constantly preaching like healthy lifestyles and stuff like that and so it, there is something there where if you're if you're not living a life that is that feels um truthful to you then that's going to really impact that. So like eating healthy. So if, for example, you know, if I've had a week where we've just gotten so busy and we're eating fast food, maybe more than we wanted to, I'm going to be more stressed that week. And there's biological factors to that with the food, right? But because those foods actually do like us, you know, trigger more stress and, uh, you know, release more stress chemicals and stuff like that in your body. Um, but also it's about like, just like not being happy with how I'm living my life that week. So it's like when I'm eating better foods, more, you know, more nutritious foods, I genuinely do feel less stressed. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about flow state last time as well. And so for, for me, it's like anytime I can enter into flow state, that's a source of stress relief. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll do that with whatever, with darts and with certain various activities around the house. Yeah. Guitar. Yeah. And one other big thing with stress relief and, um, you know, maybe this is a good, like kind of wrapping point here, sure. but work-life balance is a big one. And this is something that I would love to talk more about on like a full episode, maybe Let's even do it. But, but yeah, work-life balance is something that's really important too. uh, something that has been much more difficult given the state of the world where a lot of people are working from home now. 
Um, some people love it, but uh, you know, and even if some people love it, it might not, you know, they have to be careful with the balance that they're creating in their life because it's a lot easier. Whereas I know from experiences talking with clients and, and, and loved ones, um, that, you know, it's, it's harder to create a separation now where, yeah, and that's not a good thing. No. Like if you're doing your work at your kitchen table or even in your home office, you know, if you're working and you know, let's say you've got your kids there or let's say your spouse is there, like before you would separate and it was like two different lives, right? Whereas like, okay, the stress that happens in this life doesn't affect this life because they're now separated. Mm-hmm. And you can forget about it and drop it and come through the door and it's daddy or, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is, yeah, there's tremendous value in that, yeah. obviously. And I'm somebody who, you know, I feel I, I could speak to this quite a bit, which is why I want to do a, you know, a deeper dive on this, being somebody who has worked out of my home for, for, for quite a while. Um, but people have to be careful on how loose those lines get with work and life. And, um, I would just recommend to people that they, you know, evaluate that and say like how much of this might be creating a little bit more stress in my life and how can I start to create a little bit more of a separation. Okay. All right. Well, that's an episode's worth of info there. I like it. Me too. Yeah, no, uh, that was, uh, I think it's, I think it's an important topic. Hopefully it was an interesting topic. And I think, you know, with that, there's a lot of branches that we can, that we can pull on there from, Mm -hmm. for different, uh, different deep dives. That's right. So everyone eat well, listen to some of the nutritional advice, but it's not just nutrition. You can't just stay isolated and eat well. It's still not going to equate to a happy, healthy, long life. You have to make sure that you are connecting with other human beings. You don't have to go out and party and be a social butterfly. Um, you should have a few close people that you can confide in, that you can trust, that you can talk to. That goes a long, long way to, to health and happiness. Yeah, and I mean, if you if you are struggling to get it, then, you know, create it. Like, if you're struggling to find it in your life then create it Mm -hmm. right like no matter what it is whether that's nutrition whether that's um community there's there's opportunities out there do what you have to do but first reflect inside say what do i really need where does my focus need to be to improve my quality of life because yours is going to be different from mine and and go from there okay thanks so much everyone for joining us again we really appreciate it and uh you know get outside a little bit more maybe that can be a goal as well that's right okay well we wish you health and happiness and longevity and uh we'll see you next time see you next time thanks everyone all right